as a play. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright. And you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Krypton Report. This is me, Tyler. I have a very special episode here. This is a segment of my crossover episode I did with my man, Phil. The great Phil, the great one, you know, Phil the Great and Powerful that I always talk about, over on Capes and Lunatics for Nightwing News. And we're chatting with Dan Jurgens. We discuss Superman and Nightwing and all of his other writings. But here is part of my Superman discussion with Dan. I highly recommend everyone go and check out Capes and Lunatics and Nightwing News especially uh, because it's great. And Phil recently did an interview with Kyle Higgins that I was blessed to be a part of. And then coming up one with Tim Seeley. So check out the Dan Jurgens interview. And here we go. I'm, I'm enjoying the conversation. I, I admit I'm a little behind on my Nightwing reading because I was really turned off on the, the whole Rick thing. Yeah. And, you know, and f- like Phil's kind of won me back over and I was trying to catch up. Oh, yeah, I, this man turned it around. I, uh, I have not uh, caught up. I'm just, I just wanted to be on the recording to get to talk with you. Cause... Okay. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I know you're, you're, you're I mean, you two and... are also huge Superman fans. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, if, if, yeah. You, I mean, if you, yeah, if you just look behind okay. me, you can <laughs> so see I, some of my stuff. Once, uh, when I was still working on Superman, someone came up to me and said, well, you know, wouldn't it be easier to write Batman because he's so human and, Superman is this alien? I said, well, you know, in a way, Batman is way more alien than Superman is. And Clark Kent is way more human than Bruce Wayne. So I don't know. Um, but I did make that point. Just made that Clark's a good guy. It's a good point. That's, that's going to be my new sound bit. I'm just going to play everywhere. Like, oh, All man. right. <laughs> <laughs> the work we did as part of Rebirth on action comics and some of the stuff that we did when we crossed over with the Superman title, which uh, Pete Tomasi and Pat Gleason were writing. I think that's some really strong stuff. I think it helped bring back kind of this core of who Superman is. I think the uh, Superman, Lois, and Clark series I did that Lee Weeks drew, um, which really brought this married version of Superman and Lois back into the DCU and introduced John Kent, I think, is, is really strong and still pertinent today because that is kind of that part of the foundation that has gotten us to this point where we have John. Uh, that's what I was going to ask about. Um, I was I was I was waiting my time. I wanted to let Go Phil do his time. Time. It's like we planned your, everything, ask right? Your Superman question. <laughs> I know. Oh. Look at that segue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good job, no. I I wanted to point out that I loved your Lois and Clark run. Thank I you. loved that mini. You're, you're very welcome. And the whole like, so the year that that came out, you know, being in 2015, everything. That's the year like my son was born. Oh, so so reading like the Superman, like that just Superman as a dad, I loved, and like just being a new dad myself and like reading this, um, I thought was just great. And I loved like just that whole mini series. I loved the convergence where you know John was born and then into rebirth action. And I feel like rebirth, like Superman and action, those two books together has been some of the best Superman writing in continuity comics in a long time. Thanks. You know, I, I appreciate that very much. And, um, you know, I, I think we're all happy with the way it turned out. And this idea that we, um, you, you know, Superman has been around since 1938. And, and I think the job of any writer is to always add to this tremendous legacy, these, this tapestry of the character. And, you know, when I did Superman, in the 90s, I think we really did that with the death of stuff and so many other things. And I think this time around, I wanted to add to it in a very different way. And they went along with this idea of John Kent and, and let us make him a permanent part of the DC universe. And this idea of Superman putting the black suit back on to kind of work behind the scenes um, in his 
in John's younger days and everything. It was just a lot of fun to be able to do. And Lee Weeks was just tremendous on the art. And I think it became very, like I said earlier, foundational to where Superman is now. Was the John, when you, when you took over, like when you were writing in Convergence and like John was born, were there plans to bring him in? Was like John, that idea, like did that come from you or did that come from editorial? Like, oh, no, um, it, it, where did that me, come from? In, in terms of coming from editorial, it was quite the opposite because um, when we had decided to do sort of the five year later, the five years later stunt as part of Future's End and where is everybody now? One of the things they said is, all right, no kids. No one gets to have any kids uh, if we're going to look at these characters five years later, because that's what everybody that's what everybody will come up with. So uh, as we got into the convergence idea, I did tell um, Dan DiDio, uh that, you know, if we give if we have Lois give birth and and there they are with young John, that child can represent the D.C the future of DC some way, somehow. And we didn't know how. Um, I even said, maybe the Convergence world dies and uh, Superman and Lois put this child in a rocket and send him off into, the, into space and he's soaring off to the stars. And that becomes your future somehow. And who knows what that'll be, but it's an idea that takes us down the road. And um, as we started working on it, there were various ideas for what would happen to John. And eventually it was part of let's just bring that version of Superman back to the DC universe because with the, with the uh, new 52 version, they had gotten to the point where that Superman and Lois really didn't have a relationship. They weren't married. It was a very different look. And I think a lot of readers were lost again. And again, it was part of that random randomness and not having context for the character because a lot of what they had known was now gone. And we were able to bring that back into place with Superman, Lois and Clark. And like I was saying, like I, out of any other character, I love the idea of Superman as a father. I love reading those stories and him dealing with that. And, you know, my son now loves Superboy, and I show him like, you know, the John Kent stuff and he, he gets a kick out of that. He doesn't like when he finds out there's Superboy that's, Young Clark can he gets mad about that. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when you were given the the, did you ask for it? Was it given to you to do the mini series, um, or did it just come about like, hey, do this so we can segue into Rebirth easier? Um, well, or was it always planned? No, what it in a little bit. Well, yes and no. I mean, the one thing I will always say is creation is. People want to think of creation as being like this straight line, and it never is. It's kind of up and down and back and forth, and one idea goes forward two steps, and then you jump back because it wasn't working, and then you start over again, and, you know, it's always sort of messy is what I'm saying. But I had introduced John as part of the Convergence event that left us with Superman and Lois and this young child. And by Superman and Lois, it was the more historical version. And as part of Rebirth, DC had made the decision that they wanted to get back to something like that. So this, again, is where Dan DiDio said, you know, is there a way to do a series here? We kind of think, you know, would you be interested in something called Superman, Lois, and Clark that tells us the next story in their life? And I said, well, sure, and here's what we can do. And we find out, that the worlds have blended and this Superman has been in the background on earth all this time wearing the black suit. And, you know, you start having those conversations and those conversations can end up leading to more. So it's, it's not as easy as having the puzzle all figured out when you first start talking about it. And, and it's those conversations and those various ideas that develop and then take you farther down the road. This will be my last question, Phil, and I'll give the power back to you. Um, How was it writing, sharing, like, the Superman Reborn storyline? You know, you did two issues, and there was two issues done from Superman and all tied together. Uh, How was that work together with doing, like, the red and the blue? Like, where did that idea come from of being, Uh, like, the way to bring it all together? Yeah, the the situation we were looking at is, so we had kind of gotten to the point where we had, 
two versions of Superman. We had the new 52 one and the version I had done in Lois and Clark. And the, the question was, how do we, do we just have one leftover or the other one leftover, or do we somehow combine them? And the feeling was that if we combine these two versions, it's playing a little more straight with the readers. So we decided to do that. And it was as simple as um, Peter Tomasi and Pat Gleason and I, we all get along very well. Uh, And we just sat in a room with the uh, editorial group and said, okay, let's bash this out. How can this work? And earlier, we kind of knew we were targeting that. So we had come up with this idea in my book where we had a very specific Superman and Clark Kent. And and it was kind of like, how can you have Superman and Clark Kent at the same time? And it was Mixias Pitalik masquerading as Clark Kent, and that then... His efforts and his world is what gave us the solution to combining these characters and kind of turning that corner so that everything was back in place and able to work again. And I know it sounds really complicated, but it wasn't. It, it was just, a, yeah. you know, let's use this magical imp named Mixes Pitalek, and he's our excuse to get us out of this hole that we were sort of in. See, see I think it worked great, and I don't know, did you guys look back at what Grant Morrison had done in action comics one when the new 52 launched uh, just because I just reread and I like, I reread all of that into rebirth. That was a task last year. Um, but he has Mixie doing some things and there was actually a panel in it where you see Superman red and Superman blue and they're talking and I, and I, and I messaged my friend like, Oh my gosh, it's almost like you, they, predicted what would happen back then at rebirth. And I just want to know, like, was there ever like a reference back to that mixy adventure before you guys wrote your story? Um, not that I recall. Uh, I think part of it is more driven by this, which is when you go down the list of who of Superman's villains could have kind of devised some of this, there aren't that many. And and Mixias Pitalek was a logical one. And, of course, this whole idea of Superman red and Superman blue is one that was first introduced in the 60s anyway. I mean, we played around with it in the 90s. So I got, I got number one right over there. Okay. Well, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it's way to go, right? I'm just impressed with how easily the name of that imp rolls off your tongue. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's it, 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 you spend enough time working on Superman and you get to learn it, right? <laughs> I, I like what were I, you I, calling I, Tyler Mitzi? I, I just call him Mitzi because I get like it's stuck on that. the sounds and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I sound more like stutter. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's a Superman question. I mean, is Superman out of all the characters that you did you didn't create yourself? Is do you understand? Do you think you understand Superman the best just because you've written so much Superman? I yeah, probably. Um, I don't know if I quite think of it as understanding him the best. I think part of it is that understanding comes with the amount of work that you do. Um, I think I have a very, very clear uh, idea of the character, Um, almost as though if there's a situation with, you know, that Clark Kent finds himself in or Superman finds himself in, I feel like I know the character well enough to say, yes, this is how he would react. This is what he would say. Now, that's just my opinion. It doesn't make me right, and it doesn't make me wrong, because other writers may very well differ with that, but for the most part, when you work that long with a specific character, yes, you kind of get to that point where you have that sort of understanding. So, yeah, so super. So you'd say Superman is probably one of the easiest for you to write now, just because you've developed that Superman muscle, I guess? <laughs> I, I don't... You know, part of it is... Uh, because I've done so much. Or is it harder? It, it, can, it? it, it can be harder because I don't want to repeat myself. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to repeat yourself, if you're cognizant and conscious about, you know, cutting some new cloth at the same time and, and hitting some new areas, that's a, that actually can be harder. If you're working on a character you've never worked on before, you know, like I say, everybody has, you know, two great Popsicle Man ideas, right? And they'll all walk up to the editor of Popsicle Man and say, I... I have this great idea for Popsicle Man. It's the greatest thing ever. And the conversation should be, yeah, we get it. That's a great idea. But then what do you do for the next 35 issues, right? And so with Superman, it's like, for me, I've done a lot. 
and it's what can I say that's new that I haven't said before. All right, Tyler, got another question. Uh, yeah, I was going to wait till the end, but I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask this one thing because this is something that kind of bothered me. With it being your created that you your character that you created, how do you feel if you can say about how John Kent was treated in the current run when they took him from being the boy, aged him up, and what they've done with him since? Oh, you know, um, I think there's this assumption out there that like. Brian, uh, Michael Bendis, and I don't get along or something like that. And and the fact is, we're friends. Uh, I don't and, understand that. I just wonder. <laughs> okay. So, no, and, and I think everybody sort of has that idea. That's not the case. When, um, when Brian first came to D.C., uh, he and I and a couple of folks from D.C. went out to lunch, and Brian was telling me right from the start his plans for the character and how he was going to age John and, um, you know, use Jarrell and things like that. I said, great, you know, go for it. And, and part of it is where he wanted to get with John being part of the Legion of Superheroes, which I totally understand. And, and the idea that you would have a Superboy who is a core member of the Legion of Superheroes is very much what the Legion is all about. Those of you who know the, the Legion of Superheroes and its history – so I was totally on board with it. And, and I think there are always ways that if, if they wanted to do kind of, of uh, a series of backstories that, that tell the untold stories of Superman and Lois and young John when he was still, you know, eight years old, that I, I think you could still have your cake and eat it too, that you can do both. Um, but certainly... I don't have a problem with this idea that you want to take John Kent as Superboy and make him this foundational core member of the Legion of Superheroes because that's the history in a lot of respects of what the Legion has always been. That makes sense. I just I hated that they aged him and took him away from Superman just because, like I said, I loved that story of Superman being the dad. Um, and I hate that that's, you know, gone, but sure. And, and I understand that reaction too. And as I said, you know, we've seen this many times in comics where there's been, you know, this, um, untold tales of whatever character, whether it's Batman or, you know, we've seen that many times. And I think there's still, there still should be a way to do some of those stories for the people who like that version, but that doesn't mean you can't have both somehow. Because, again, it's comics. We, we should be able to do a lot more than we do that way. All right. So that was, like I said, part of my interview and Phil's interview with Dan Jurgens. That's a little bit you're going to get. Um, it's a little odd and shaky because it's from different parts of the conversation. But I do say go listen to Capes and Lunatics on the Nightwing News and check out the full interview with Dan. All right. And remember. Look up in the sky.